Hi, this is Dr. Pat TV, and we're looking at the part two of our review of material from our business pre-calculus class. And so we're looking at lines, and we're going to start looking at the equation of a line. And to kind of get an understanding of that, that formula, let's uh, first look at what makes lines unique. Uh, how do we tell them apart? What's the features of them? And so I've got a first example here. I'm looking at two lines. They share a common point. However, their slopes are different. And because their slopes are different, we can tell that these are two unique lines. They're not the same line. And so one feature that we use for identifying lines is their slopes. And so then I've got a second uh, pair of lines here. In this case, the lines have the same slope. They're parallel, but they're still not the same line. So what do we need? Uh, another identifying point or, or idea for uh, lines is the actual uh, starting points. So these two lines, even though they have the same slope, don't have uh, the same equation because they have different starting points. So different slopes, different starting points, those are the unique features we have for lines. So when we look at the equation for lines, y equals mx plus b, the m and the b, the key, po key ideas of the, the formula, one's about the slope, the m, and then the b, that's the starting point, that's the initial value. So our formulas for the equations of lines all incorporate the, uh, those two uh, key features, slope and starting points. All right, so when we're making an equations of lines, it's, it's kind of a two-step process. The first thing we have to do is uh, get a slope, and the second thing is get our starting point, or B value. It's a, it's, it's a two-step uh, process, to just like that dance. All right, so for an example here, I'm looking back at Staruli's, and what I want to do is develop a formula for the total cost. And it's a nice straight line, so it's looking like we should come up with a formula for that. The formula that I did come up with is 500 plus 50t. I've got an initial value of 500 and a slope of 50. How did I get that? I looked at the graphs and I found two key points. Uh, the recommendation I have for working for graphs is, hey, pick two points that are easy to read. And so at uh, these two points that I've highlighted here, they're crossing the tick marks uh, right there. And so they're easy points to read. Uh, I use those two points, 2, uh, comma 600, and the other point, uh, 10, comma 1,000. And so using those two points, I was able to calculate the slope. That's where I got 50. Now, where did I get the 500? Well, this graph does start here at 0, 0, so that's the initial value. So I just go up there, and, and I'm looking at that uh, red circle there, and I'm thinking the initial value, the starting point, is, is approximately 500. So that's what I'm going to use for my function. So I got the 500 because that's where the graph starts. I got the 50 from, pick, from picking two points and calculating the slope. All right, another uh, idea for finding equations of lines when you're given two points. In this particular case, we're going to have to do a little extra work because neither of these two points have an x value of 0. The first one has an x value 1, the second one has an x value 3, so I don't have my initial value, I don't have that information, I'm going to have to define that. So if you can remember from uh, your previous classes how to find the equation of lines, say a little pause here, do your calculations, make your formulas, and then continue on. For when I found the equation of the line, the first thing I did was I calculated my slope. I took the y values on top, took the differences of the x values on the bottom, made sure that uh, I had my points consistent. The 12's above the 3 and the negative 4's above the 1. That's because they're, those are the points. And I got a slope of 8. Then I go off, I take that 8, I bring it on over to the equation, I put my slope in there. I picked one of the points, I just thought I'd pick 312 for no other reason. I could have picked the other data points. So I take that 312, I take the uh, y value of that 12, and then I take the 3, the x value, and I put that in. And so then uh, I've got that. I got y minus the y value of the point is equal to the slope times the x minus the x value of the point. So that's the setup. And then what I did is I brought that 8, multiplied it through. So I got an 8x minus 24. And then I brought that 12 over to the other side, and that's where you're getting 8x minus 12. So that's uh, how I got the equation of that line, just using two points. We can get those two points given to us, or we can get those off of graphs or from a table of data. 
So two data points. Okay, what I'd like to do again is uh, just another example of finding the equation of a line. So uh, I'm going back to the uh, gift giving example that we used. In this case, when I'm making this equation, I'm going to make uh, t equals zero, my starting time. I'm going to make that 2005. And so when I do that, my data points become 3 comma 21 5 and then 5 comma 16 8. You may recall that uh, we did the slope on this in the previous uh, thing, and uh, our slope was negative 2.35. When I put that together, I get this nice equation. So how did I get this equation? Well, on the next slide here, um, I'm using those two data points, like we said. I calculated the slope. It turns out to be exactly the same as before, the negative 2.35. So it doesn't matter how you calculate your time, um, whether you use 3.5 or 2008, 2010, you, you're taking the difference, you're still getting the two-year difference. Then I take, uh, I pick the data point. In this case, I took this data point, 3, 21, 5. I took the x value, or the t value, the time, I plugged in the 3. I take the y, uh, the gift value, and I, I plugged it in there for the 21.5 there. Uh, I'm using the letter G just for the gift. You could keep using a Y if you'd like. And I'm using the letter T for time instead of the letter X. And then I do that multiplying, that negative 2.35 through, and then I added 21.5 to both sides, and that's where you're seeing this 28.55 from. And so that's uh, another example for finding the equations of lines. I know I kind of went through that quickly, but uh, this is a review, so just kind of hoping that you see it again. You can hit pause, re-go through that again to kind of like, hey, wait a minute, how does this work again? So you can do that at your leisure. Now for another example, I just wanted to do something a little bit differently in this one. I wanted to do the 2008 and 2010. I actually wanted to use the number 2008 2010. I wanted to use the full year and I kind of talk about the difference there. So when I get that equation, notice the slope is exactly the same, negative 2.35. However, the initial value, the 4740, that's a completely different number than what we had previously. So what's going on here? Well, when I use that data points 2008, 2010, think about how far we have to go back to go find time zero. We're going 2,000 years back. And that's why we're looking at a difference of 4,000 gifts in a way when we're doing that. So the initial value at time zero would be 2,000 years behind backwards. And so that's why that number had to be so big. And so looking at what the numbers mean, again, the negative 2.35, it represents our rate of change. It's telling us how the number of gifts are going down 2.35 gifts per year. And that 4,700 number, well, that's basically the number that we started with the initial value. But because that's really 2,000 years ago, that's why it's so big. I wish I had 4,740 gifts one Christmas. But I come from a family of six, and that was not going to happen. Okay, so that concludes uh, the second part here of our review of linear equations. Um, the next part, we'll start getting into some of uh, the economic things. Thanks. Bye-bye.